Oh yeah, that's okay. So, with a little bit more of a, an indirect lighting. I actually moved to the couch because I thought the light would be better and then it turned out that the light was terrible. So I'm going with candles and one little lamp there. And I hope this is not too dark. Um, actually, it feels a bit more comfortable. Very romantic. So, I want to talk about something and actually my audience on YouTube is the only people I can even talk about this which is kind of sad and kind of the subject of this video so I did a little bit of soul searching like who am I where do I want to go blah blah I'm actually having a speech presentation something I'm talking about historical fashion like uh, in the 18th century and a little bit before that and a little bit after that and um, it was a bit like writing a term paper and ever since I graduated from university I've been doing so much reading on fashion because I found out that that's actually the thing that I want to do. That's actually the thing that I am the most fascinated with of all the things that I really like. I really like singing but I don't want to be a professional singer. I studied German literature but neither do I want to be an author nor do I want to go into whatever you do. You <laughs> study that, like go to a newspaper or something. Stay at university forever. Then I studied history of art, but I don't really want to work at an actual museum, at least not if the subject is something I don't care about. You don't just go, I want to be in any museum. That's not the thing I want to do. So, <laughs> the only thing that I'm actually so crazy about that I keep buying these really expensive books that I can't afford and uh, coerce my mom to drive two and a half hours in her car to see an exhibition in a completely different city because it's about clothes and I've always wanted to go there yeah but that was a fun that was a fun little trip so um that's the point where it's kind of telling you wow this is really what you want to do and so ever since I graduated, I've been buying so many books about fashion and reading so much stuff and I just kind of, it's like a sponge, I take it all in and I'm like, yes, this is mine now, this is my knowledge. So this is the only field where I'm actually so into it that I don't need a teacher to force me to learn, I don't need um, an actual career goal, I just, I just go for it. So apparently this is something I want to do. So I'm having this presentation and um, I was so glad and I started writing and typing away and it just kept flowing out and uh, got really long. It's like the longest term paper I've ever written. It's probably at least one hour of talking really fast. So I probably will have to need to cut that down. And then I'm like, okay, I need somebody to run this by. I need someone to, I don't know, proofread, tell me if something doesn't really get across right, if there's like um, logical errors in it or something's just complete bullshit. So um, I asked a friend who apparently was very bored by the task and um, I don't think she read more than the first page, to be honest. But then it was 22 pages of uh, very dense writing. So um, I can understand it, but I wasn't happy about it. Then I ran it by my boyfriend, who was really good about reading it and actually he uh, helped quite a bit, but he's not the right person to talk to either. I mean, he's interested in this because I'm interested in it, because he's trying to be supportive and kind and um, he finds it interesting more than most guys I know would find it interesting, but it's not his field of expertise. He's not that into it, actually. He's not a costume pro or anything of that sort. So I can't really ask this of him all the time. Not really. And then I was like, well, who can I ask? Actually, ask? Is there actually anyone that who can help me if I have a question about the hem lengths of, uh, I don't know, the 1760s or uh, what kind of shoe goes with what kind of period dress? So, I don't know. That's why I keep buying all these books like a crazy person. So um, also, I bought more books, by the way very nice viewer of mine a while ago suggested these to me and I've been meaning to get them ever since then and I just didn't get around to. I remember she was quite shy, 
so I'm not going to call her out. But in case she's still watching, I actually bought it. it took me a couple of years, but uh, I listened to good advice. So then uh, I also bought this, How to Read a Dress, which I read in a couple of days. And I don't have much time for reading properly, so this was very, very good. And also it helped me with this uh, Mantua dress issue. It's really confusing to me. What's a haute volante? What's a mantua dress? In what decade is a mantua dress this thing? And in what other decade is it this thing? And how does all of this go together and make a robe à la française later? It's so... Oh, I'm, I'm still not quite through with it, actually. So um, I will have to find more things, more books. Um, this is going to be so expensive. Seriously, I, I can buy like five books a year if I'm lucky, and some I get for Christmas, but um, I actually live below the poverty line, technically speaking, so um, the fact that I invest so much money in this is just uh, another testament to how crazy I am about the subject. Then I bought... Ref no, actually I got this as a present by my, from my grandma. Refashioning and Redress, which is really, really good, but it's not a manual. You need to know that when you read it. It's about um, museums and how they deal with conserving different dresses, and uh, mostly it's about different nations and how they deal with the dresses by the indigenous cultures that were uh, colonized. So this is really interesting, the work they do there. Then I bought 19th century fashion in detail because it was way overdue and it's really good, expectedly. And a book about... This, this was very hard to find. Uh, Louisa of Prussia, who was a very famous fancy dresser and she had a very particular style and actually people love her to this day and this was an exhibition so this one was sold out very quickly they um, aren't printed in large numbers also what i did i ordered the i pre-ordered the american duchess book but it hasn't arrived yet also i must have been a little crazy i ordered uh, the dashwood shoes from american duchess which is pretty much crazy because this is very expensive with the shipping and as I said I'm quite poor but I had a little money so I was like wow I really like these shoes I want to have them so I ordered them and then I um, figured out that uh, I will probably have to pay sa sales tax when they arrive which is 19% <laughs> in Germany so uh, I have to pay at least one-fifth of the purchase price just to I don't know the postman or something I don't know and if I need to exchange them because they don't fit I will have to pay like between 30 and 60 bucks just to send them back and have them exchanged and then I will have to pay again when they come back into the country so oh my god this is so oh so uh, cross your fingers for me and <laughs> just hope that they fit because otherwise I will have bought very expensive shoes that I will not be able to wear Actually, I was thinking about buying a second pair of other shoes because they're on sale and I'm not quite sure yet if that's a good idea. So, enough about that. I was listening to the American Duchess podcast and I really like listening to that because they actually talk about this stuff and then, then I figured, wow, they have so many people to just converse with. That's the thing I'm lacking. You know, I listen to these podcasts and I wish I had people who I can talk to about dress the way they talk to each other and to other people. Because it seems that most of the costume experts live in America and in Britain and over there it's like this interwoven net. There isn't just some idiot like me who likes to sew, I don't know, Baroque Regency clothes and has like a little blog thing going on and they post their pictures and they're like playing dress up Over there. It's like they do actual research. They have a huge library Maybe they're interned at some museum the people from the museum know the people from university who study this stuff In actual academia. I couldn't find a single place in Germany where you can study historical dress That is not training you to be a costume designer for stage because that's a completely different thing. That's not what I'm going for here. There's like one person or two people maybe um, that I even know that do academic research about historical dresses. <laughs> that's just not a thing here. And over here you can't just 
intern at some costume museum or at, I don't know, Colonial Williamsburg-esque things. It, it's just not there, you know? There isn't this infrastructure, there, aren't, there, there isn't Costume College or RuffleCon or whatever, there is nothing like this. In my entire life I've never met one person in real life who was into making and researching historical dresses. That's just not a thing that happens. And I only realized recently and that made me really sad because you need someone to exchange ideas with. Maybe someone to tell you, no, this is bullshit, try this. V very, very simple stuff and I don't have that and that's really the thing. I'm whining here, I'm very aware of that. So the only thing I have is doing a lot of research and feeling like the only person in the world interested in this. I mean, um, I went to this museum in Ludwigsburg and they have a beautiful exhibition but they don't even have a catalogue, they don't do this, they don't do any research apparently. Like This this exhibition looked like it hadn't been changed ever since they set up all the dummies. And there aren't any essays published in any research papers about what they find out curating this thing. Nothing. They just put the clothes there and that's it. And there are many museums actually. Um, around the place where I live that are said to have huge collections of historical clothes and they're never on display, ever. There's even a curator at the Historical Museum here and she's curator for um, ceramics and for historical textiles and I had a talk with her and I was like, oh this is really interesting, I'm really into the subject. Try to introduce the subject into talking about other stuff. And she deflected it because she actually doesn't really care about the subject herself very much. She was just dumped there and this wasn't her field of expertise and she doesn't really want to do it, at least that's what I got from the way she reacted. So that's very sad. I would do it, honestly. But yeah, so I can't just go there and be like, hey, can I just look into the collections for a little bit for research purposes? They don't do that. They don't let you, let you in there. It's okay. If the collections are molding in a cellar, but God beware, somebody with an actual research interest wants to touch them or just look at them. This could be disastrous. It's so weird. So yeah, um, there isn't this thing where uh, the museums follow the bloggers on Twitter and uh, there isn't this thing where where there's this huge community where everybody gets together and everybody knows each other from different events and there are no events, there's nothing. There's two things you can do. Uh, you can join the LARPers or you can become a cosplayer. That's the two things. And nothing against either of these genres or these people, but the ones I've met were a bit difficult. Aside from the fact um, I have a passing interest in medieval clothing and in cosplay, but both of those groups are very selective in who they let who they let join. <laughs> um, if you're not the real type to be LARPing, apparently you don't get to play with them. And uh, cosplayers can be even worse. I found that all these uh, Japanophiles can be very elitist, which matches with the country they like. But um, if you're not a fan of uh, A, B and C, then you're not in the club. You have to, all the interests have to align. You have to like the same music and you have to like only that music and you have to like um, the same anime and you have to like the same books if you read books at all. And if all these interests aren't exactly the same as all the other people's, then you're not in the club. And that's it. They are really kind of intense that way. And so um, this is not a very optional uh, option for me, really. Uh, also, I'm very bad at making the right friends. <laughs> it's like, um, I'm not friends with any, like actual friends with any YouTubers who do costuming. I'm not the person who like uh, cozies up to the cool kids and that kind of stuff. That was my fault uh, ever since middle school. Like I'm not invited to the right parties because I didn't basically hit on the right people and uh, I didn't sniff out the popular kids ahead of time, so now I'm not in the cool gang, so no, I don't get 
any of the advantages. Yay. That's a bit sad sometimes. Um, yeah, but... Uh, I'm really missing this. I didn't... I didn't know I was missing it because I didn't have it, but now I realized it. I'm like, wow, I need some kind of community. Maybe someone who speaks German who can error read my freaking essays. Something like this. Because the only people I can actually talk to about sewing, that's you guys. And... I really like the comment system on YouTube. It's okay when you have very nice viewers. But even there, there's sometimes this... Sometimes very uh, annoying. I mean, there's trolls. And then there's the people who are just unquestioningly, uh, unquestioningly <laughs> supportive of what you do. And it's really nice when somebody makes a compliment, but you don't know what to reply to that. I mean, I could write thank you underneath pretty much every comment of the nice people that watch me that I get. She's like, oh, I love your videos so much. And they go, thank you. And then the next one is like, oh, I, I, I love what you did there. And you're like, thank you. Well, thank you. And you, and you. And that's, it's really nice. I'm happy every time somebody writes something nice, but um, it's not exactly a conversation opener. And then there's other people who just correct you on everything. And I recently went back through my comments because there were a couple over the years that really bugged me. Um, like, for example, people are like, oh, well, you did this and that wrong. Oh, this is actually called something different. Oh, why did you do this? And nah, 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 nah. They always sound like really annoying valley girls in my head when I read one of those. Like, well, actually, so those people. And what I find that sometimes the people who correct you actually have um, fewer information about the subject than you do. Some people tell you all these little truisms, like uh, how it's totally okay to put a 13-year-old girl into a corset so that she develops proper curves. And that's just how they do it in the South. And I was like, welcome, we have a tri time traveler. Apparently uh, the last 150 years or so didn't happen if that's still something that is being do done in the American South. Seriously? What the fuck? Um, comments like that, people are like, well, actually, this and this and that. And I had one... I had one commenter who uh, took issue with someone I said in the Night of the Museums thing, and I took so much time explaining what I meant. Like, so I did this essay <laughs> of a comment, and the reply every time I did that was, yeah, but I heard once from a person that it's actually really different and uh, also I read it in a book once. <laughs> wow, I read so many books, so I know things too, you know. And um, every time I did these really long, well, uh, we can't just, we can't just assume intent in clothes. That's just the wrong way of looking at it. So um, I kind of did concessions there and uh, I was like, it's not really wrong, it's not really right either, so uh, we're somewhere in the middle and please try to understand what I'm saying. And they still kept replying with, yeah, but I heard it once and it kind of made a lot of sense, so I'm sticking with it. I'm like, wow, okay, good. Um, I tried to explain it and you don't want to listen. And the reply was still like, yeah, well, but I think the other way is more logical, so I'm just going to keep believing what I wanted to believe in the first place. Like, okay, whatever. And, um, I guess they, were, they, they weren't really in it to have a debate in the first place. Um, not what they were there for. Because I, w I was being nice and I was like, yeah, I've seen some of your videos. And the reply was, oh my god, I had no idea we're so famous. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Um, you're famous? How are you? Okay. Uh, that was really weird, because I, I guess they just came there and wanted to pose as these uh, great experts for some reason. Because I, I really have to rein myself in sometimes. I can be really nasty and uh, sarcastic. And... Ah, I was just being nice. I, I extend the courtesy of knowing who else does something similar on YouTube. 
to what I'm doing. So because you always have to be kind of aware of your surroundings and make, oh, the, these people are doing that and these people are doing that. So when something's in the related videos, I click on it and check it out. So I wasn't even saying I'm a fan or even I'm a su subscriber or anything, but me knowing them meant that they were famous. <laughs> mind blown i mean i mean some people um are just like that who knows but again that kind of makes me sad um because sometimes i have very very good conversations in the comments and most of the times i don't so that's that's not enough really i i need to get myself some costuming friends <laughs> or something so um if you want to talk about costuming details i'm very um result oriented actually um, so if you have any questions or want to correct something that I'm doing wrong or whatever it is, just want to talk about this kind of thing, leave me a message, I guess? I don't know. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I'm not really good at finding friends this way. Really. Friends just kind of happen. And if they don't, they don't. Ah. So yeah, um, I kind of feel like I need more contacts. Uh, uh, contacts in the in this regard because I'm not getting anywhere apparently where I live I'm the only person doing this I'm considered the expert at doing this by people that I interact with which is crazy because I feel like I I'm such a noob I have no idea there's so many things I do wrong and everyone's like oh my god it's amazing well that's because you haven't seen how people actually do it overseas They've got a scene, you know. I don't have a scene. I'm by myself. And that is very sad. So, if anybody wants to talk costume in details, I'm always open for uh, constructive criticism and interesting comments and stuff like this. And I love it when people comment nice things. It's very flattering and it makes me feel good, but it's not useful. That sounds way too harsh. I still love it when people say, oh, this is so helpful, thanks for making this, so I like that. But um, don't hold back on the criticism or the questions or anything like this. Because I need more feedback. Yeah, that's it. I hope I didn't say too many stupid things. Anyway. <laughs>